What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper channel, coming to you with another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. MLB, hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell goes a long way for me on this video, goes a long way for you. That way, you become a prize whatever great content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods. My friends, this was a really, really light Wednesday for all day baseball. We had so many weather issues. The lines were being slow to react to certain things about the. Uh, it was a whole thing. I just didn't want to. Didn't want to invest all that much money, but that's okay, friends. It's okay to be light on certain days, even if there are a bunch of baseball games. We're accumulating sample size. I know the premium Discord people, you've been happy. We had really nice NBA hits there, the prize picks dealio the other day, uh, firing up some goodies uh, in that premium Discord. You can sign up for that down below if you are so interested in Odd uh, Chopper. Uh, other thing that I really wanted to talk about at the top of this program. Hopefully you're paying attention to the way the leans likes locks work because leans are things I'm thinking about betting and I need to see the odds. Things like O'Neill Cruz didn't end up putting that on the card. We'll talk about him again this time around because I think it might be a little bit better and uh, we'll see. He ends up getting in the leadoff spot out of the middle of nowhere. The line comes off, comes back, reintroduced at a ridiculous number. It was already at a bad number as it was, but now when looking like it's going to flip around and be blowing out to right there, who cares? That's not what I'm getting at. Let's talk about this. Leans, things I'm thinking about betting or a game that I have no interest in, but the way the format of this works is that you want me to break down every single game, talk about the ins and outs of it, try to give you good, proper information, but leans, usually like a majority of the time do not turn into plays now there's plays that'll come from other games or props because again i'm more of a prop centric person although you wouldn't know it by the card that i have in both mlb and nba uh golden state minus three and a half go fire that up if it's still available i don't know the nba people but either way leans friends those are things that you do not count against the record don't count them towards like oh come at me about whatever if you want to bet it on your own sounds great but i'm into ev betting positive expected value. We're looking for things, edges in the marketplace, comparing odds across multiple books or multiple pick em sites. If you're in one of those states, opportunities, friends, to make you lots of money on likes and locks. Again, the locks, those are things also where they're the best plays on the board, but I hate the word locks. And I hate the idea of having to just say, oh, this is the only play that matters on the entire day. Because Odd Chopper, we're going to bet 15, 20 type props that might be sitting at the top of the board if they all have decent expected value, 1%, 2% or better, OS rating, having that combined with it. So just hopefully you understand the format of this. Leans, things I'm thinking about betting or will not be betting, period. Likes, those are usually around half a unit or a quarter unit for a lot of the home run props. And then the locks, those are going to be one unit. There's usually only one or two of them. In the MLB streets today, I have zero of them in this specific spot. I think we're going to have to wait for a couple of uh, K props to be showing up. We have a lot of weather issues that exist even still for Detroit, New York tomorrow. So they're playing a doubleheader. Anywho, longer intro here from the front. Flew through it yesterday, but with only six games, five uh, total you know, situations. We've got uh, six games. We've got 10 teams. Going to be an interesting slate, friends. That's for sure. So felt like I could take the time to really talk to you about the process of this, that it is a marathon. It is not a sprint. We're not trying to get rich quick. We're not trying to hit massive, massive parlays here on this video. What we're doing is trying to slow, steady profit, build that bankroll up so that you can really, really hammer down your edges in the marketplace over at OS or with me here on this program and in that premium discord. Cool. Great. Grand. Glad we had that talk. Producer Jacob, he's like, my God. We're... Anyhow. He's got things to do. I've got things to do too, but I'm going to talk baseball here first, friends. That's for sure. NBA, don't forget to check out NBA Lindy's here as well. We'll talk about BetMGM a little bit later. But Producer Jacob, six games. Let's start with the doubleheader. Let's get to the picks. All right. You have to understand, this is our first doubleheader that we've had this entire season. So if you're newer to betting baseball, this is basically what's going on. You've got two starters that can change from the get-go. So understand the rules of your sports book some spots will have action no matter who the starter ends up being which again kind of makes detroit interesting where it's like oh although they've already announced their two starters we only have one from the mets we don't know who that second starter is going to be but again Tariq scooball was the guy that i was kind of looking for they end up getting that game rained out it is what it is inclement weather they're up in new york and now double header first one of the season the other part of a double header that isn't just like the pitchers where those can change is the lineups are going to have turnover and you can kind of get clues from the first game once that lineup comes out who might be sitting in the second game it's going to be harder earlier in the season we don't have any injuries and also we're accumulating sample size maybe there's platoon guys 
who get a chance to hit, you know, left on left, right on right. There are more unknown sport, but as the season goes on, I promise you, we did a really good job of identifying game two edges. And I think that that's still something that exists ever so slightly in the marketplace. Although they have started to release the odds and they get bet into place pretty darn quickly for those game twos. And by that, I mean, there's a lot of sharp money that is coming in on those game twos, thinking the same way I've been thinking for years, where try to find clues, try to find ways, uh, small little edges, and they can generally come out around the same time when that lineup drops for game one. But anywho, enough talking about that and really long intro to start breaking down baseball. We got the Tigers, we got the Mets, game one, Casey Mize, Adrian Hauser on the other side, and I'm not an Adrian Hauser fan. 46.3% hard hit, 20% K rate, 7.1% walk rate. These are his, of course, 2023 numbers. Just never been somebody back in the Milwaukee days that I was all that interested in backing in any way, shape, or form. We saw him drafted with the Houston Astros once upon a time. They cut bait with that pretty darn quickly. But uh, you worked through some of the game logs last season with Milwaukee, and uh, it's just brutal. He just doesn't have a whole lot to offer. Now, I, that being said, you got, my parents always said, you got to find, you know, you, it's like... For every mean thing you say, two nice things. I'll do the inverse because that's all Adrian Hauser really gets. I said a lot of mean things. And now we'll do the one thing that he's good at. Limiting walks. Like limiting base runner. 7.1% walk rate. Has an identical 7.1% barrel percentage for what it's worth too. But uh, considering the 46.3% hard hit, it's not all that interesting because if it does get barreled, it goes high and far. 11.2 degree average launch angle. As for the other side of this one, we broke him down the other day. Casey Mize former number one pick. Yeah, number one pick in 2018. And he's got a four-seamer slider combo. The fastball velocity is not really there by any means, but he's really struggled, really struggled at the big league level. Hasn't pitched since 2022. We're going to see him in action. And I think that's kind of what the Tigers want is they want to get a sample size here on him. You go back to just about anything in, in 2022. He only pitched two games there. So it's been basically two years off for Casey Mize. I'm very intrigued by what we're going to run into. I went through some of his spring training numbers. He went five innings uh, in the course of uh, March. He ended up finishing in his last start with four and a third. Gave up three earned. Again, the velocity looks about 93. So again, there's not going to be a whole lot to mine out of that. It is about on par for what we saw two years ago when he still, again, struggled at the big league level. And with that, friends... First play I really want to go to, I don't see how Casey Mize really generates a lot of swing and miss here at the big league level this season. Going back to 2020, 19.5% K rate, 2021, 19.3% K rate, and now you're going to be going up against a Mets team that at the top of this lineup, you get guys like Lindor, guys like Nimmo, guys who aren't going to strike out all that much. Pete Alonso, probably going to be here in a longer sample. Jeff McNeil, not going to be striking out a ton, but... It's just a tougher situation for Casey Mize to come out of the gate cold and to be able to generate swing and miss. And there's a three and a half with a nice, nice plus money attached to it here in the K department. I think that's going to be our game one play. I already fired it up, so it is our game one play. Casey Mize under three and a half Ks. That is subject to change. Obviously, it'll just be voided in the event that he doesn't pitch. So there's that. That's useful. But he's listed as the game one starter. I think we're going to see the normal Mets lineup here. And I do think having a day off here on Wednesday is going to allow for them to just roll out their A-team back-to-back. Probably Nervais and, and, and Alvarez will be split up in some capacity. I think Omer Nervais has a chance to be out there as the first starter purely because it's going to be a righty on the mound here in Casey Mize. So uh, be paying attention to that lineup. I will obviously see the home run routes when those are dropped. But game two, let's dig into that one here. Detroit money line. Again, we have Matt Manning, the only listed starter. The Mets don't have anybody here. There are a lot of options. Again, they had a Wednesday day off. I do think there's a chance that you run into a bullpen situation, which would be very difficult for this play because, again, bullpen situations can be useful. But Matt Manning is going to be getting plus money attached to him in some capacity here on the road. Now, Detroit off to a hot start. Again, I don't think hot starts for three, four game sample size are indicative of anything in the MLB. So don't read too far into it by any means. And he's not good. He's not good, but he does limit the walks. He had a four expected ERA in 2022. 2023 was not pretty. Had a 3.58 ERA, which looks pretty, but a 5.48 expected ERA. Negative regression is coming, but... This is a cold, frigid environment. I'm going to be paying attention to these lineups. I want to see if it's Alvarez or 
um, Nervai is that ends up getting the catcher spot. It's going to change ever, 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 ever so slightly. It's not going to matter all that much if we're being honest. But anywho, Detroit money line, my lean for game two. Let's continue on our merry way. I was kicking myself, and then oh, he goes zero for four and just doesn't even put the ball in play, and it's a whole thing. Anywho, O'Neill Cruz, he was your lean. I didn't end up firing that one up again. I'm going to be firing it up probably in this spot if he leads off yet again. Different pitching situation. And now the wind looks as though it's flipped around in the ballpark. Looks like it's going to be blowing out to right here. It's not like books don't know that. It's not like it's not going to be completely factored in. But I think what's not going to be factored in is the fact that O'Neill Cruz was smashing over the course of, uh, no, I keep wanting to say AAA, not AAA, during the course of spring training there we are but now you got martin perez on the mound for the pirates for the washington nationals josiah gray we saw him in that first outing just doing no josiah gray negative regression things we knew it was going to be coming we knew that the he had a great year last year relative to expectations he's still not good but he ends up being your all-star from the washington nationals 2.50 whip in that first outing seven earned two homers off the bat too two homers both of those coming from lefties. That's not surprising to me in any way, shape, or form. Because again, Josiah Gray, not all that good. Just to touch on Martin Perez, because again, there's only five games and I've got plenty of time. I know some people don't want me to take time breaking down the actual plays. Again, why would you not want me to explain my work? Like, why why would we do that? Anyway, Martin Perez, it is what it is. One, one start for him as well. 62.5% hard hit percentage. Obviously, that's like an unsustainably high number. But I will say, no swing and miss yet again. 15.3% K rate was bottom 5% in Major League Baseball in 2023. 4.90 expected ERA. Limited the earned runs in that first outing. Yay, good job. Problems are coming. You went four and a third, one earned, yet the expected ERA, 5.49. Uh, that is going to be indicative of what we see with a Martin Perez this season. He has no swing and miss stuff like just none is not going to be able to generate any swing and miss it's all cutter sinker it's all placement it's all trying to limit walks it's all trying to just be cute and whatever there's a lot of those pitchers in major league baseball these days so it is what it is we're gonna have a lot of guys like him to break down and hopefully we can get some warmer weather where we could definitely take advantage in the home run props but in this spot specifically going to be hard pressed to do anything other than for me target josiah gray here with a bat 21.4 percent barrel percentage in that first outing again super small sample size but three barrels out of 14 batted balls in play that is a massive massive number and yeah it's higher than what 9.4 percent but in 2022 10.7 2021 12.2 and i brought it up o'neill cruz moved to the leadoff spot had batted sixth and seventh to start off the season they're kind of taking the byron buxton approach where a couple of years ago with my minnesota twins byron buxton they put him in the nine hole because they were trying to generate that confidence not put a lot of pressure on him well O'Neill Cruz is your guy he was supposed to be your guy he's going to be your guy just keep him healthy he's fun to watch and throws rockets out there uh you know on the left side of the ball field so it's fun to watch but I think O'Neill Cruz is going to be my home run play here shout out Aton Shander though firing up Joey Gallo there off of Odd Chopper I loved it it's beautiful stuff to see premium discord was certainly happy let's talk about it now shall we 1495 weekly friends, 4995 monthly. Again, I just said OS, OS premium tools, the positive EV tool. It was popping with some home run props. Hopefully we can get a couple of those across the line in the evening window. I ended up betting Vlad Guerrero home runs. That had a, a slight positive EV attached to it. So uh, that was my only home run prop that ended up three home run props we talked about and only one of them ended up uh, on the card. It was not any of those three. So again, the positive EV, market-based approach that is the important stuff i can talk about the metrics i can talk about everything but baseball betting baseball especially is about price and probability pretty much all of sports betting is about price and probability if you want to factor it in with the best tools in the marketplace not just for individual bets but for the parlay builder if you're somebody who loves to build out four five six leg parlays do so in a profitable fashion over at os as well back tested products that work and then the fantasy optimizer if you have prize picks if you have underdog if those are the only things you have in your state to take advantage of props don't worry we got you covered. It's all there for you. Plus the Discord Insider Access friends. That is me and everybody else that you know and love here at Odd Chopper posting their betting cards 
every single Monday through Friday. It's great stuff. And weekends, they take it off. Uh, or they're not taking it off. They smash all the time and post a lot of bets on Saturday, Sunday. Sundays, I'm trying to wane off a little bit just purely because there are massive, massive weeks of MLB coming down the pipeline. Want to stay fresh, want to stay mobile, want to make sure that I'm taking care of you with the best possible product I can Monday through Friday. Uh, yeah, everybody is working for the, well, it's the week, not the weekend. But anywho, $14.95 weekly turns into $12 by using promo code Lindy, friends. So promo code Lindy, that'll help you 20% off Expert Picks, Discord Premium Tools. Would love to see you in there. Would love to hang out with you again. Pretty light day for me on Wednesday, considering, you know, so much weather and random late scratches in the NBA and trying to keep everything straight. It can be difficult this time of year. Let me help you. Let me help you find the best picks available to you using tools, using data, all in one place over in that premium Discord. All righty, y'all, back to the picks. If you made me, if you absolutely made me lock something, it would be this ball game here. Tanner Beebe taking on, yes, my Minnesota Twins. We're going home. I'm not a good singer. It is what it is. I, I, I can't really help myself with that one. Kind of sound like an idiot. Anyway, my Minnesota Twins taking on Milwaukee in back-to-back -back games. Uh, didn't go well yesterday. Well, Tuesday. Went well Wednesday. Then won 7-3. Nifty stuff. Kind of a little bit of an outlier situation. Again, I'm glad that I didn't pull the trigger on anything there. But uh, we got the under on the Chris Paddock, which was the only bet that I had from that morning window. Uh, we got that one across the board there. Only prop, excuse me, from the morning window for sure. But anywho, we continue on our merry way with Tanner Beebe here. I think this is a fascinating, fascinating breakdown because I mean, he used to really have some stuff uh, at the beginning of last season, started to wane out towards the end. I think the answer to like who Tanner Beebe is, is somewhere in the middle because a really strong first half ended up finishing with an ERA under three for the year. 3.69 expected ERA though total. You had to expect some negative regression on those numbers. And well, you started to see it through the cracks. Max exit velocity was way up. So when he was getting hit, there were some really hard hits coming off, even though 6.1% barrel percentage, pretty decent stuff considering almost a 2,300, well, over a 2,300 pitch sample size, 24 barrels. Uh, that's a pretty decent number in just 394 batted balls in play. So decent. First outing was not pretty, though. He ended up taking on Oakland and three earned, five walks. Do I think he's going to be that guy who walks a million people? No, I do not. Maybe some jitters early in the season. Maybe he was just terrorized by the Oakland Athletics lineup or the lack of people in the stands. That'd be a little bit jarring too. But a 7.7% walk rate from last year. I expect those kind of numbers to get a little bit better, but still not very good. 24.1% K rate, I don't expect based on his velocity, based on his slider changeup. I don't expect him to be somebody who generates a lot of chase. Again, he was a great pitcher for the Cleveland Guardians last season. I don't want to belittle him like that, but you talk about somebody who's pitching run value is like 97th percentile. There's no way, no way with the soft tossing nature of this, the slider changeup. I just don't see this being something that Tanner Beebe has a better season than he had last year. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Again, these are the kind of stands you want to be making earlier, but again, I'm not locking this for that very reason is that there is a chance Tanner Beebe is still really good. I just want to accumulate some more sample size based on what his pitch mix is. And I don't find it to be as impressive as the numbers that he put up last season. Cool, great, grand. Pablo Lopez, we know is pretty freaking good, don't we? Yeah, we do. Now it's going to be harder to generate swing and miss. We've seen for the last couple of year years and there's not a ton of lineup turnover here from last year to this year. Strikeouts are hard to come by against this team. And now Will Brennan, Josh Naylor, Andres Jimenez, Gabriel Arias, Obviously, Jose Ramirez, Steve Kwan, but like these guys do not strike out a lot. Now, Ramon Laureano at the back of that lineup, probably going to be something, uh, you know, if he moves out, you get some strikeouts. Austin Hedges strikes out against everybody. Esteban Florio. We'll see how this lineup comes out, but that back half of the Guardians lineup said it last year. It's super attackable, even if there aren't always Ks. Now, there might be more Ks lurking there. However, I'm finding it to be pretty efficient here at Open for some of these props across the board. Not a ton of hit props that have shown up to me over the course of the first five, six days. We'll see if we can get some more advantageous numbers, but a lot of screenshots from Twitter that do not look good to me with minus 250, minus 275 hit parlays. That is wild to me. And yeah, you're going to hit 
minus 275 hits, they're, they're going to show up from time to time. But over any long sample size, that stuff is just wild to me. Again, if there's fixed payouts and you can compare them like you can at a pick'em site, I'm okay with firing up some hit props from here and there. But uh, for the most part, don't be firing up hit props when they're massive, massive juice, massive vig here. And then there's an opportunity for one guy to screw you and then you bitch about it forever because... Oh, I had these four hits and everybody was minus 250 in it. And well, you know, producer Jacob's like, yeah, I'm going to do it anyway. I know a lot of you are saying it too. You're going to do it anyway, because it's fun, right? It's also fun to win money in my opinion, but that's going to be why we're going to back this lineup. Now it sucks. It sucks. It's awful not seeing Royce Williams out there. It's terrible. It, it hurts my feelings. But I said this last year too, and I think it's going to maintain. I like the way that this Minnesota Twins lineup sets up against some of these like softer tossing pitchers, especially from the right side. Because you have Alex Kirilov. Matt Walner came from absolute obscurity. Carlos Santana never strikes out, although 23.5% K rate so far this season, that, that's that got to come down. The guy doesn't strike out nearly that much. Edward Julian, somebody who's been solid and now leading up against some of these righties. And then, of course, Correa, Buxton, pieces like that. Max Kepler, been there forever from the left side. There are some lefties that definitely can do some damage here. And Tanner Beebe, if I'm expecting negative regression, I want to be early to the party. So home opener for my Minnesota Twins, going to be frigid, going to be a fun one, but I'll just take the better pitcher over a longer sample size and I will back Pablo Lopez here in this spot. Yeah, it's not my favorite price to be getting, but I think it should be closer to like minus 165, minus 170 in France. That is expected value. That is good stuff. And again, maybe parlay this with another positive EV play and make that your, if you're really looking for something that isn't minus 155, laying 155 to win 100, I get it, I get it, but I'm going to do it. Another one, oh, another one. We got another money line that I like here in this one. Again, this is wild because again, I'm the prop guy. I love my props. These are the things that I'm, the highest expect value plays on the board routinely in Odd Chopper. They're not money lines. They're not run lines. They're not Totals, although totals I find to be pretty exploitable here lately. I've definitely revamped my totals game over the course of the offseason. And I think we're going to start taking advantage of that here. And, you know, there are a lot of people very early to the party with weather conditions. And, and I'm very good with ballpark factors and how it's going to be utilized for home runs and specific long balls. But uh, not so much in the totals department. And we'll get... We'll get into that here in the future, but I uh, was breaking down a couple of those tools. Had more of them on the card here early on this season because I'm feeling pretty confident about what I've done so far. It's been a little bit actually negative. It's a, what, a unit and change, 1.2 units uh, negative in terms of totals here that I have bet this season. Again, the leans aren't likes. They're not official plays. They're not on the card. They can be later. They can be added if the numbers change, but just wanted to throw that out there. I feel like I'm just going to have to reiterate that a lot here in the early going of the MLB season, but that's okay. I know a lot of you are new. I want to give you good information, and that is the most important part of this. Not necessarily what shows up in the Lindy's picks column, especially if they're leans, because again, those are hard plays. They're hard plays. And Ryan Weathers might be good going up against Lance Lynn, who used to be good. And then, well, had a really good outing to start off the season. Now, Lance Lynn, I've seen him everywhere. I've been everywhere, man. Yeah, you saw him get traded to the Dodgers. My twins. He's been with everybody, it feels like, at this point in time. But going up against the Dodgers, no work, five strikeouts, four hits, four innings, decent amount of stuff that we had here. But got to point it out, fastball velocity, 92. Now, he can be one of those guys who gets away with it because there's quite a bit of movement. It's a really decent pitch. Like, if you go look at it on any, like, pitch arsenal deal or you start breaking it down, 160, uh, what is 167 slugging, 173 expected batting average on that pitch in that first outing. You go back to last season with the Dodgers for some of that, uh, 250 expected batting average. Pretty decent stuff. Not bad. It's not the best that I've ever seen, but again, pretty decent. Oh yeah, I should keep talking here. Ryan Weathers might be good. He might be good, but I'm willing to find out here in this spot by backing St. Louis, because I think this is your parlay piece for the Minnesota one. You've got Ryan Weathers here, Mr. Withers. Uh, I do think that this is somebody that might, again, I, I'm going back and forth so many times with him. It comes down to, I do not trust this Miami line. What are they? Oh, and seven? Oh, and seven in this spot? 
They're 0-7. Can you believe this shit? Can you? I can't. But anyway, Ryan Weathers, 308 expected slugging. Just one sample, one game sample size. It's just in a good ballpark at home, but this is on the road, and it's a whole thing. And pretty clear cut to me. St. Louis is a lot better baseball team than Miami, and this is also priced a little bit off. Good talk. Another talk, Bet MGM. Bet MGM, friends, $1,500. Yes, $1,500 coming back to you in bonus bets if your first wager loses. Again, these are amazing deals that Sportsbooks are putting out in the beginning of the season. You want to take advantage for sure. Down at the comment section below, uh, you go to the bottom bar there. You see Bet MGM. Sign up there. Whether it's $50, bucks, 100 bucks, 200 bucks, 500 bucks, $1,500. No matter what you have for the means for your bankroll, Utilize it over at BetMGM and take advantage of these promotions when given to you because that's coming back to you. You want to take a nice long shot play. You want to take a long shot money line play. Again, that's better expected value for you knowing that that money is coming back to you in bonus bet form. If you plan on playing across multiple sports books like we recommend here, because again, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 sports books, that is a great opportunity to shop for the best lines every single day. And that, friends, is a lot of money back in your pocket at the end of the MLB season. Again, this is a marathon. This is not a sprint. We're here to make money over the long run. And one of the easiest, most basic ways to do that is to shop for the best lines every day. So it's if you're 21 and over, if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Down at the link below, bet MGM. Alrighty, y'all, back to the picks. One more game to go. We have Mr. Michael Soroka in our lives here, uh, now pitching for the Chicago White Sox. Again, that's a wild little run out in life, that's for sure. Wild run out, no strikeouts in his first outing. That is lovely to see. Going up against Seth Lugo, who I find to be good. I think I've always thought Seth Lugo was better than other people did. Again, the jury can still be out on whether or not he's going to be somebody who can reclaim the strikeout stuff. 33.1% strikeout stuff back in 2019. That was ridiculous stuff, but he's gone back and forth as like long reliever such, but uh, the fastball friends, the fastball, 32% usage and the curveball comes off of it perfectly. I like both of those pitches. You go through them this season. Well, 257 expected batting average was last year. 287 expected batting average in just the one start, but only four, what is it? Well, it's 27 lefties, a uh, number of times that he faced lefties there up and down that order. So I feel pretty good about the four-seamer here produ producing, having a little bit of a, a, a run out there. Feel pretty good about Seth Lugo, but I think Michael Soroka is a huge wild card, but I'm feeling especially interested in the under here of eight. <sighs> It's difficult, though, because eight lands on kind of that key number where 4-4, four, four, you're screwed. That's not fun. A lot more fun to bet overs when you're talking about eight. It's math. We'll talk about key numbers. I want to get back into that discussion. Again, the totals, I've been working on my game. I've been working on my game. But this is going to be a price-driven thing more than it's going to be anything else because range of outcomes, most likely scenarios in baseball. Game ends with seven runs, nine runs. Those are your two most probable outcomes. When it sits at eight here and you know that tie is going the other way, it is a tough ask for me to want to be betting anything here unless the number moves ever so slightly. So I'm going to pass on it for right now and hope that the number shapes up by tomorrow. But KC, a little bit cooler there, not the 65, 70 that we saw uh, first pitch of the Minnesota series and then over that weekend. But I'm going to be paying close attention to the number here on the under because Seth Lugo, I want to back somewhere. I just don't want to back Kansas City here at minus 142, even though. The White Sox lineup. Oh my God, are they there? And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks in the MLB Streets. Hit that like button down below. Nice to just have only six, what, six total games, five, well, 10 total teams that were in play. Uh, pretty easy breakdown here for today, but got to go a little bit more in depth. Again, I know a lot of you want me to just give you the picks, give you the picks, but for me, I'd rather give you the good information. That is kind of what I pride myself on doing here on this program. I'm going to continue to do it in some capacity, but also I can talk a little bit faster. Once we get a little bit, you know, in a rhythm here, talking the baseball yet again here this season, there's going to be more breakdowns that we have. I'm going to have more time to do stuff over on X uh, to break down uh, the Lindy's Locks update. I know a lot of people have been looking for that, wanting to get back to that. Uh, also check out X for the weekend. I think Saturday I'm going to be posting uh, a massive, massive thread there for my MLB Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks in the MLB streets in written form. So that'll be a wild one over on X. So follow me at Eric Lindquist. That's where you can find me. Thank you, producer Jacob. Really good stuff. As always, my friend, enjoyed it.
check out NBA Lindy's here as well. Until next time, friends, a uh, larger slate on Friday. Hopefully we got some more plays to break down for you. I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the MLB streets on Thursday.